make sure you have completed the retrieval practice on Microsoft Forms before watching the rest of this video. The link to this is found under the retrieval practice section of this assignment on Microsoft Teams. As you watch this video, make sure you make notes. This can be in the form of bullet points or a mind map. This lesson looks at the population density of Russia. The learning purpose is to be able to describe the terms population and population density in order to describe what the population of Russia is like. In order to do this, we're going to describe the terms population and population density. We are going to use a waggle, otherwise known as a what a good look one looks like, to describe population and population density of Russia using the T method. And we're going to explain how geographers start a piece of fieldwork surrounding population. The term population comes from the Latin word populus, which means people. In geography, it refers to the number of people living in one area. The population of Russia was 143 million as of 2019. This is more than double the population of the UK. The UN predicts that Russia's population will fall to 132 million by 2050 due to low birth rate. Russia is split into eight regions called federal districts, shown on the map. Central district is where the capital city Moscow is located. The Volga district covers much of the drainage basin of the river Volga. And Gashetia, which we discussed last lesson, is found in the northern Caucasian district. This bar graph shows the population of each federal region in millions. Examine this bar graph now. We can describe what this bar graph shows. In order to do this, we use a method in geography called the T method. T stands for trend, example, anomaly. The trend of this graph can be described by naming the district with the highest and lowest population. In order to do this, you look for the highest and lowest bar on the bar graph and look for the name of the district. Example refers to the use of data from a graph. In this case, we have said what the highest and lowest districts are and we then use the y-axis to say its exact population in millions. The anomaly is data that doesn't fit the trend or stands out as being odd. In this case, we need to look at the map of the districts again and compare the size of the district with its population. So if we take Central as our example, on the map it is the third smallest district, but if we look at the bar graph, it has the highest population. This would be an anomaly. When looking at a set of data, such as the bar graph we've just looked at, we can also perform statistical tests. One of these is called range. The range tells us about the spread of a set of numbers, or in other words, if the numbers are close together or spread out. The range is worked out by finding the difference between the highest and lowest values in a set of numbers. It is done by using the calculation range equals highest value subtract lowest value. For instance, this bar graph shows the population of English regions. To find the range, we would find the highest bar, which is the southeast with a population of 9.2 million on the y-axis. We would then find the lowest bar, which is the northeast with 2.8 million. We would then take away the lowest value from the highest value to find the range. So in this case, 9.2 million subtract 2.8 million, and it gives us a range of 6.4 million. Population density is the average number of people living in an area. We usually measure population density as the number of people on average living in a square mile. A square mile is about the size of Oaken Gates and St George's combined. If there was a high number of people on average living per square mile, we would say that an area is densely populated. If there was a low number on average of people living per square mile, then we would say the area is sparsely populated. Population density is usually shown on a choropleth map. The word choropleth comes from the ancient Greek words choro, meaning location, and pleth, meaning number. A choropleth map is therefore a map that uses colour shading to show data. They are used to show differences in data between different areas and regions. Generally, the darker the shading, the higher the number it represents. So if this choropleth map was showing population density, the areas with the lightest shading would have the least amount of people on average per square mile, and the darkest would have the most. This choropleth map shows the population density of each of the eight federal districts of Russia per square mile. Examine the areas on this map with the highest population density. We would call these densely populated areas. Compare this with the areas that you can see with the lowest population density using the key. These are described as the most sparsely populated areas of Russia. 
Geographers can study the population of an area by carrying out fieldwork inquiry. A fieldwork inquiry is a process where geographers ask questions or test ideas about the world, go out and collect data, and then try to answer their questions and ideas using the data. All geographers start any fieldwork inquiry with either a hypothesis or a geographical inquiry question. A hypothesis is a statement that can be proved right or wrong. In this case, a hypothesis is that more elderly people than young people live on my street. Following the fieldwork inquiry process, we would then collect data to prove or disprove the statement. We could do a questionnaire of the street, asking how many people live in each house and how old they are. We would then use the data to say if the statement is correct, more elderly people than young people do live there, or incorrect, for instance, more young people than elderly people live there. A geographical inquiry question is a question that can be answered with data. In this case, we could ask, where do the most elderly live on my housing estate? We would then follow the fieldwork inquiry process and collect data. We could do a questionnaire of each street on the estate, asking how many people live in each house and how old they are. We would then answer the question with the data we collected. In this case, this graph shows that Ford Road had the most elderly. Exit this video now and complete the Word document found under the output section of this assignment called Shun Activity, Population Density of Russia.